Okay. I think we're ready. God looked into the emptiness and created all that is. God spread out the earth in its diversity with mountains and valleys, rivers and fertile plains. There were patches of flood and fire, of dryness and of vivid green, embraced by wind and sea, a sun-filled landscape of hospitality. And threading through it all, the weavings of golden hope were dreams of justice and compassion and gentle streams of peace. God gathered all peoples into community, gave a sigh of joy, and set us free to choose our path in a daring adventure of trust. This is our God. This is the wonder of our calling in faith. Let us worship God. And now please join me in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to, I'm going to surprise somebody and invite somebody to read um, the first reading. So, Gail, would you please, can she hear me? Yes. Gail, can you read the first reading for me? got to do this at the beginning. <laughs> a reading from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Hishlah, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? 
So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks to be to God. And we will read it responsibly by half verse. All your works praise you, O Lord. And your face and your servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and, and speak, speak of, of your power. power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious the splendor, splendor of your kingdom. kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. And Gail, would you read the second reading? The second reading is from the Ephesians. I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's sing, If Thou But Trust in God to Guide You. Jesus Christ according to John. 
Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they all sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come to the world, into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea got into the boat and started across the sea of Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. And when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, great. We have great readings today. Um, and I have to tell you, that this Gospel of John is different, and I hope you recognized it as I just read it, is different from the, um, from the other um, synoptic Gospels of Mark and Luke and Matthew. The story is told differently for a reason, because we're supposed to see Jesus in a new way. We're supposed to actually recognize that, that it wasn't the disciples that distributed the bread, it was Jesus. And so when we take Jesus in our communion service, we are actually accepting that Jesus is giving us this bread. But what I want to do is look at that in a way that comes through the second reading, the letter of, uh, to the Ephesians, to the Christians in Ephesus, and I want you to hear all of um, chapter three. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share um, the translation called the message for chapter three. It adds a little bit before we get to that wonderful prayer that you heard Gail read. So what I want you to do is sit back and listen to this. I want you to think about this, what I'm gonna read, as being spoken to the churches, the Episcopal Lutheran churches in Claremont. I want you to hear this personally, okay? 
So Eugene Peterson, who translated the message, refers to this chapter as the secret plan of God. This is why I, Paul, am in jail for Christ, having taken up the cause of you outsiders, that would be the Gentiles, so-called. I take it that you're familiar with the part I was given in God's plan for including everybody. I got the inside story on this from God himself, as I just wrote you in brief. So you'd have to go back to read the first and second chapters again. We've listened to parts of them in the last two weeks, but it would be good sometime after this to go back and reread those first two chapters. It goes on, as you read over what I have written to you, you will be able to see for yourself into the mystery of Christ. None of our ancestors understood this. Only in our time has it been made clear by God's spirit through his holy apostles and prophets of this new order only in our time has it been made clear. The mystery is that people who have never heard of God and those who have heard of him all their lives, what I've been calling outsiders and insiders, stand on the same ground before God. They get the same offer, same help, same promises in Christ Jesus. The message is accessible and welcoming to everyone across the board. This is my life work, helping people understand and respond to God's message. It came as a sheer gift to me, a real surprise, God handling all the details. When it came to presenting the message to people who had no background in God's way, I was the least qualified of any of the available Christians. God saw to it that I was equipped. But you can be sure that it had nothing to do with my natural abilities. And so, here I am, preaching and writing about things that are way over my head, the inexhaustible riches and generosity of Christ. My task is to bring out in the open and make plain what God, who created all this in the first place, has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all along. Through followers of Jesus like yourselves gathered in churches, this extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among the angels. All this is proceeding along lines planned all along by God and then executed in Christ Jesus. When we trust in him, we're free to say whatever needs to be said, bold to go wherever we need to go. So don't let my present, present trouble on your behalf get you down. Be proud. My response is to get down on my knees before the Father, this magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you, strengthen by his spirit, not a brute strength, but a glorious inner strength, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, you will be able to take in with all followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out, experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God actually dwells in our life. You can do anything. What, li what limitations do you face in your real life? How have you experienced the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love? And finally, 
Here's the ending. It's one of my favorite two verses in the entire Bible. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah, in Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennia. Oh, yes. That's chapter 3. Chapter 3 begs us to return to reread the first two parts of the letter. And you could choose to do that after church or maybe when this evening when the weekend begins to wind down. Paul is in awe of how this church has managed to accept God's gift of bringing together the Jews and Gentiles. He is overflowing with gratitude to God for what he understands to be happening in Ephesus because he is sure that bringing all of us together has always been God's plan. What is happening in our world right now is counter to everything God has done and is doing in creation. What is happening in our world right now is counter to everything God has done and is doing in creation. This prayer that ends chapter 3, especially those last two verses, I believe are the words we need to hear right now to give us hope to be awkward, kind, and brave. Some of you have heard me say that before. And he says, now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever, amen. All of our readings this morning help us to sit in the same awe and wonder of God in creation, in Jesus our Lord and Savior, and the amazing power of the Holy Spirit to work within us personally and collectively. It isn't an either or, it's a both and. We have to both do it internally and we have to do it together as the church because we are family, part of God's family. And I'll tell you, the, once I got through Ephesians, I went to the psalm and I realized that this psalm, just those nine verses that we said of Psalm 145, actually give us uh, a real deepening of how we understand God in Jesus, who that person is, who it is, the effect that God and Jesus has on our lives. So what I'd like to do is as you read over, um, whoops, I lost my place. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so the psalm this morning blesses us with nine verses. And the key is to connect each one of those verses to an experience that we have had of God like that in our own real world in our time. So use your, your bulletin and look back at the psalm. as we read it together. And what I want you to do is I want to do, I want us to be able to do this and remember that we're going to try and be awkward, kind, and brave. Melissa, help me to know where to look, to look at them straight on. The camera or the, okay, the camera. All right, 
So we're going to try one of these together. So someone pick a verse, and I'll choose the first hand I see. Well, I can't see all the hands. But unmute yourself, and if you can be the first one to speak, tell us what verse you have chosen. Awkward. Okay, I see Shelly's hand. Which verse would you like, Shelly? 15. Say it again. 15. Okay, so the verse, here it is for everybody. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bound, bowed down. All right, so think about that, what that verse says to you, and think about an experience in your life, you, an experience where you knew that it was God's presence or Jesus's presence with you that actually entered into that experience. Now, you may not have been known it at the time, but in hindsight, you go, whoa, how did that happen? And then you smile and say, Oh, yes, must have been God. What are those stories about? What are those stories about? So, who can tell us, if you've thought of one of those stories that goes along with verse 15, um, unmute yourself and remember, be awkward, kind, and brave, and tell us the story of, of, uh, of how God showed up upholding you when perhaps you fell or lifting you up when you felt bowed down. Do I have anybody who's ready to be awkward, kind, and brave? Unmute yourself. Don't raise your hand, just unmute yourself. Come on, there's got to be one of us. I'll go. Okay. Wow, Shelly, you go for it, girl. Well, I don't like awkward silence. So I guess um, the biggest one in my life would have been when my dad passed away. Um, and having him be the first one the closest to me to pass away i would say that it little things that happen in the house that's the way the the cuckoo clock that made a noise when it hadn't been set for over two or three years the bike he used to ride in the kitchen, his stationary bike, the computer lit up. Um, it was those little things that reminded me that he may not physically be here, but spiritually he was. And that I would be okay because he would always be with me. Thank you, Shelly. That was a beautiful story. So see, we connect those lines, each one of us to um, to some, like Shelley did, to an experience in our lives where we're pretty sure God was there to lift us up or to help us to, to not feel quite so down. All right, so now I'm gonna ask each one of you to choose one of the verses of this, of this Psalm. And I want you to do the same thing that Shelley did. I want you to choose the one that is calling to you and, and connect it to an experience. I'll give you a minute to do that. And if you're watching this on video, you might do it as well. All right, 
so I'm going to ask if there is someone, one more person, who wants to try being awkward, brave, and uh, awkward, kind, and brave, as Shelley was, to tell us that story and tell us what verse it connects to. All you have to do is unmute yourself and tell us your story and the verse. So I should tell you that come fall, we're going to be asking each other to tell lots of stories to each other as part of our transition work. And so this is a really good time for us to sort of practice. So I guess I'm going to have to be awkward, brave, and strong, and uh, kind. And the kindness is about letting you all off the hook right now. But believe me, at some point, I won't be letting you off the hook. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, 17. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. Um, so, so the experience, I think, um, that connects in my life to this is how I became um, truly engaged in what was going on in creation and how my faith is ruled by creation and God's creation, his ongoing creation and, and began that process of, of really taking care and being intentional about how I use certain materials, you know, like recycling and and, and doing those kinds of things. But also, now it seems even more urgent that we have had all these um, natural disasters in places where, um, in where, where they are not used to having them. I mean, not that anybody gets used to hurricanes, but um, the people in Germany and that region of the world are just, uh, are not used to having the kinds of things happen. And so it's a shock. Um, so I have realized that praying is that piece of me that really has to step up the prayers that I do. I, most of you know I start prayers by saying, Almighty God, um, we give you thanks for the beauty of your creation. I, I, almost every prayer I say starts with that line, and the beauty of your creation. Because everything everything I feel like comes, my faith comes out of creation. And so, uh, I, you know, I really do. I think about the prayers that I, I want to say and be intentional about being specific for parts of the world or how, um, how this is hurting my heart and what can I do and what more can I get involved in. So that is the verse that I would say to you, that I'm pretty sure I can trust in God to open God's hands to the, the, my prayers. So one of the things that we heard today was that wonderful prayer by St. Paul. And, and I want you to know that I think praying is one of those things that we as um, Christians in the United States don't always put real trust in. And yet praying is our most um, challenging and also effective way of deepening our relationship with God. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do um, for the next two months is I want you to try and write down your prayers. Now, you write down them any way you want to. Certainly this one that we heard today is an example of a very powerful prayer. Um, we don't have to come to that, that level of, of written prayer that St. Paul has been doing and sharing with us, but we do have to be as specific and heartfelt and that's what his prayer asks us to do, is to give our hearts to God. And so 
in the process, I want you not just to think them, not even to just say them as you're driving along in the car, which is one of the ways that I tell people to practice praying out loud, but I want you to write them down. And we're going to collect your prayers. I want at least one from every member of our two churches. I want to create a book, a way to share those prayers with each other. And, um, and we will use that from November 1st, All Saints Day, through till the first of the year to pray to pray along with the prayers that you have written this summer and in September as well. So we use August and September, and come October 1st, I want those prayers to come to me so that I put them in a book. And the reason we're doing this is because it's going to take practice. And, um, and I want you to feel like you can play with those prayers. If you do it too seriously, it will intimidate you. I'll just tell you that, or at least it did me. I needed to be able to really play with the words and to watch other people and what, how they prayed. So start thinking about that. And there's going to be more, more about this, this praying for each other um, and for the world in the weeks to come because we have two more weeks with the letter to the Ephesians. So how many of you actually feel inspired right now to write a prayer? And there's thanksgivings, there's intercessions. Prayers can be anything you want. It can be simply a conversation with God about anything that is here for you. So I've given you a task, and I'll hear from you next week. Amen. All right, we are going to say, reaffirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed on page five of your bulletin now. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now I would invite our intercessor to unmute themselves and lead us in prayer. Maybe it's me. I'm sorry, but I thought I was supposed to read the lesson. This is Bill. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bill. I'm, I must have mixed it up. So I must be. So I must be reading the prayers. Okay, I can do that unless somebody okay. else wants to. <laughs> Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all and end of all creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, especially the Chapel of Holy Angels Concord and Triumph Cross Lutheran Church, Salem, New Hampshire. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries 
who would accompany global neighbors, kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Especially we pray for our bishops, Michael and Rob, and our intern Victor, Vicar, Susan, hear us, O God. In Your mercy is great. We pray for creation. Send rain to the lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern, cast out our arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice who lead to practice compassion and humility, inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call out to you for healing. Especially we pray for those on our parish prayer list. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry we, that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give, give thanks for blessings received and ask that you fill our hearts with assurance with assurance and we bring our needs to you by needs to you now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Please add anyone else after your prayer. I ask your prayers for all people unvaccinated. I ask your prayers for all the people in Ethiopia and, and, and that whole area that are in terrible distress. Anyone else? I offer prayers of thanks. In the past three months, my son has had two replacement hip operations. Mm -hmm. and this past week, he spent rafting on the Snake River in Wyoming. So blessings for his healing. Hmm. Anyone else? Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died, as you sustain them through all their days. So dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy and you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All right, so I would invite you to set your table as I will set the table here at the altar at Union Church.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body, for the life of the world. Amen. Please join me in singing, O Food to Pilgrims Given. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We offer you praise and hearts lifted high, O God, who is creator of all, though our days and every human being vanish like mist and the light of the earth fades away in the distance, still your spirit is within all life and every human being is born in your likeness. And so with the whole created order, with the stars that silently glisten with life's glory, and the wind that howls and the gentle breeze that whispers, and with the chirping praise of birds and the echo of the saints, we join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, for you have brought forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, O God, for you have created the fruit of the vine. In the beginning, you watered the earth that all life may be nourished by your goodness. You gave to your servant Sarah bread to strengthen her family on their journey and wine to make them glad. You called Moses and his people out of bondage and refreshed them with food in the wilderness. You gave Mary and Jesus their daily bread to share. And here at your table, 
You offer us bread and wine for the journey to nourish us, your beloved children. On the night before he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine, and having given thanks for it, he shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God, whose generosity is unbounded and who wills that we should lack no good thing, bless this bread and this wine with your Holy Spirit. Meet us here, Holy One. Move among us, Spirit of life. Meet us here as we remember. Meet us here transform and transforming, broken and whole, given and giving. Meet us here that we might receive. Meet us here, nourished afresh by these holy gifts, that we might live in you as agents of change in our world. Here lies new hope, new life, rebirth. Here are the endless possibilities of awakening your struggling earth and its people. Here, as God brings new color to our trees and flowers and gardens and meaning to our lives, may we respond like seeds dying to live, plunging down into fertile ground and reaching upwards to the light, awakened by the Spirit's breath to grow, to glory, to dance. May God, our true colors, show forth around the world that you might bring forth a new harvest. And we give praise to Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The ears of wheat are broken and scattered on the hillside to grow. Gathered, they are broken again and scattered throughout the city and world to make bread. The bread is scattered to each home and broken to make nourishment. Broken and scattered, broken and scattered. And some becomes the body of Christ broken for us. As we are the people of God scattered through the city and the world and perhaps broken to give nourishment to others. We hold this bread broken and scattered and made whole. We fill this cup thirsty, longing and willing to be poured wheat whose crushing was for the bread of life, fruit whose crushing was for the drink of unending abundance, and signs of Christ's glorious rising. Be known to us, O Jesus, in the breaking of bread and in the pouring of the vine's sweet fruit. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, not because it is I who invites you, it is our Lord, and it is God's will for you 
to meet God here. So now I invite you to um, consume your bread and wine or juice, and I will distribute this to the few people that are here with me. Our prayer after communion is on page 11 of your bulletin. Please join me in speaking it. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And now join me in singing to be your presence. Christ, marked with the cross of Christ, 
Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Here ends our service, and since we are mostly all on Zoom, we will stop the recording.